say, every day is for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. But ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, has reversed the role. It is now every day for the owner of the house. If you're involved in bribery, over-invoicing, or any shady deal, the day of reckoning has come. ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, is watching you. If you're reported for any corrupt practice, you'll be investigated, prosecuted, and punished. Corruption is harmful to our nation. Join the campaign against it by reporting any corrupt practice to ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Let's we join hands with ICPC, make up better. Let's make Nigeria great again. ICPC, they want to hands for corruption. Break the chain of corruption now. Don't give, don't take. This message is brought to you by ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Welcome to Corruption Must Go, ICPC's weekly television program. I am your host, Hawa Sani Garba. Despite the rising cases of sexual harassment, especially in our tertiary institutions, most people are still not sure of what might become their fate if they dare to report, which makes many not to speak up against the evil. Recently, ICPC has been doing a lot to address the scourge of sexual corruption from the educational sector. The most recent was a one-day sensitization workshop for students of tertiary institutions in the Federal Capital Territory in partnership with Gender Mobile and with support from Ford Foundation. That is our focus for today. Stay with us. watching Corruption Must Go. The event which came on the heel of a recently held one in ICPC's Anti-Corruption Academy of Nigeria in Kefi for students of Nasara State University and Bingham University Kefi had in attendance students and staff of the University of Abuja and FCT College of Education, Zuba. It was aimed at helping participants to understand the position of the law, especially the ICPC law on sexual harassment and how to make reports. Speaking at the occasion, the ICPC Secretary, Mr. Clifford Oparaudu Esquire, said that the ICPC law sees sexual harassment as corruption as it is an abuse of office, stressing that lecturers should stick to the rewards stated in their appointment letters rather than seeking any other form of sexual gratification, especially from their students. Take a listen. We in the ICPC seek sexual harassment as a form of corruption. It is a deviation from the norm for an official of any institution to use his office or position to demand. And please, I will not confine my speech to official of any institution to use his I won't use ad hoc because it's not only the men that are guilty of this. To demand, receive, obtain, or attempt to obtain any form of sexual gratification in order for him or her to execute his or her duties or as reward for doing his or her duties. I did the official, I did the official duties ought to be carried out with integrity good conscience and diligence without the expectation of any unlawful benefit. But unfortunately, in our society, especially here in Nigeria, the reverse has always become the norm. What are we saying? What we are saying is that ordinarily, you have been appointed or employed as 
as a teacher, as a lecturer, to teach our pupils. Your reward, as contained in your, your letter of appointment, let's use that as a, as a reference point, is that you're entitled to your salaries and wages, and of course to other allowances. And that is all. But we find out most of the times we go beyond this. And this applies to the women teachers too. You go beyond that. And you think that that is part of maybe on un itemized wages or salary that is due you. That is what we are talking about. And we say no, show me so. Section 2 of the ICBC Act states thus. Includes any service or favor of any description. Section 8 of the ICP Act 20, 2000 says any person who corruptly, who corruptly asks for, receives, or obtains any property or benefit of any kind for himself or for any other person is guilty of an offense of official corruption, is liable to imprisonment of seven years. Welcome back. You are still watching Corruption Must Go. Delivering a paper titled Sexual Harassment, Private Wrong or Public Wrong, the Acting Director of the Proceeds of Crime Department in ICPC, Mr. Ebenezer Shogunle, enlightened participants on how to report as well as their duty to victims. Let us hear him. In 2009 and 2019, there were surveys that showed that over 70%, about 70% 70 of female students, of female graduates of tertiary institutions in Nigeria have experienced sexual harassment. That shows a very high thing. It's a very, very bad thing. And so we must all come together to find solutions to it. These are examples of cases. If you Google this, you see these faces. They are already notorious on the internet. This is Professor Richard Akindele. If you remember the phone call where he demanded for five rounds of sex with a female student before he would pass her. He was prosecuted by that army for that, but just that demand by ICBC and was convicted and sentenced to two years imprisonment. He has served his imprisonment. This is another case. This happened at uh, Ambrose Ali University in Epoma. He was a student who entrapped the lecturer. They lured the lecturer to her house and had people waiting to, to record him and demanded that they must sign a check and give her money. But in this instance, the student was actually later reported that she was convicted for a trapping uh, lecturer. She was sentenced to 80 years imprisonment. And this is a recent one happening at the University of Alabama, where students have to come around to demonstrate and protest against a particular lecturer that has been harassing uh, students. So dealing with sexual harassment, how do you deal with the problem? Legal framework. There are laws that prohibit sexual harassment. They may not be comprehensive, you just find them here and there. I've given some of the examples, including the Constitution, the ICPC Act, the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, the Criminal Law of some of the states, including the Lost State, the Penal Code, and the Cyber Crimes Act, possessing pictures of people on your phone, naked photographs of people, is a crime. Just having it on your phone is a crime. Talkless of one you won't uh, I mean, broadcast it. Having it at all, keeping it on your phone against the person's will, it is a crime. So when you are challenged, what do you do? First, you tell them to stop. Remember we say it's unwelcome. Somebody comes to harass you and says, sir, please, please, I don't want this thing. It's your responsibility to tell them. If you tell them and they continue, that is when it now becomes actionable harassment. Two, don't blame yourself as a student. Sometimes they tell you it's the way you are dressed. But it's the way you talk that makes the lecturers come and harass you. No, it is the mindset of that lecturer. They are the ones that are also putting themselves open for that kind of harassment. Tell somebody, don't keep it to yourself. Find a trusted person for you tell. Um, Fourthly, document, keep a diary, record events, time, location. This is very important because we will be required to prevent, I mean, to present evidence of what transpired. So keep a diary of what, I mean, what happened. Then make a formal report of complaint. It is your responsibility to make a report. The people you can talk to can either internal, the security unit in the school, the student affairs. I'm very happy that the team of students 
affairs of some of the institutions are here, then the general units or you report to the highest level of units, or you can report externally. There are law enforcement agencies, the police, ICPC, that deal with this issue, or to NGOs like Gender Mobile who are here. They have a platform online, Campus Power, am I correct? You can access this and make your report directly to Campus Power, and they in turn, they will know how to guide you and to um, counsel you as required. Welcome back. While making her own presentation, Mrs. Peace Arocha, Assistant Director, Legal Services, ICPC, revealed that sexual harassment is not restricted to lecturers only, as it can happen between students and can even take the form of making a nasty comment that is disrespectful to a person. Arocha, who spoke on the multidimensional implication of sexual harassment, said that some of the academic implications range from low self-esteem, low grade points, to dropping out of school. Sexual harassment, most times, of course, it's usually uh, caused by people you know. It's hard. Most cases, let me say about 90% of cases are usually people that you know. Could be maybe your uncle, your auntie, your fellow student, a lecturer. Most times, it's not strangers at all. So usually, when you have this kind of situation, you find it difficult to uh, complain because sometimes people might not want to believe you, they feel you are lying or uh, you might even have sympathy for that person that oh, if I report if I report my uncle, how would they feel? They might not even believe me, they might feel that I'm not uh, I'm not saying the truth. But feel free and uh, always do the right thing. So some people harass may be forced to implement strategies in order to avoid this kind of situations. Some of them would include uh, 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 taking skipping class leaving the job for people that are working, leaving the job altogether, uh, leaving the school completely, like I said, in the life case we have in all, all those states, the matter is pending at the high cost in the, all those states, the, the lady dropped out, the student dropped out of school completely. And that is not good. Having guilt that, oh, I cost it because of my, my dressing, then uh, denier say that, oh, uh, even though it happened, it's not a serious thing, so let me just let go. No, don't let go. Feel free to complain. We are here to take your case, no matter how bad it is. Welcome back. Other resource persons at the event were Mr. John Ode, Deputy Director, Education Division, ICPC, who dealt with the role of educational institutions as partners in the fight against sexual harassment. And Ms. Confidence Eziala, Assistant Programs Manager with Gender Mobile Initiative, who spoke about the benefits of a modern policy for higher institutions and some key components the policy should carry. Take a listen. A family is your first school. Whatever you're learning in school today, it started from your home. How morally upright you are, how organized you are, you start learning it from the home. So the family is the foundation for proper behavior. The family is the foundation for good moral conduct. So imagine that the family is dysfunctional. What will happen? Or the family to tolerates all forms of deviant behavior. What will happen? If your parents are observant enough, and if you, as older ones are observant enough, you will see behavior, deviant sexual traits in your children and in your siblings. And you can, at that point, some of them innocently copy. Innocently copy. So we want the educational institutions to create safe reporting centers that are anonymous because some of these victims would need to have their identities protected. Let's just imagine, picture we're in a lecture hall, the lecture has not even started and then some group of boys, male students, are harassing female students. Bear in mind that harassment doesn't necessarily have to be touch. It could be verbal and then you're creating a hostile environment for somebody. And then you that is there as a bystander, you do not say anything because you don't want to be called a busybody. 
You know, they say when they say first it was the farmers and they said it was not concerned us, and next they affected the next party and it doesn't concern us, and they continue to not concern you until it gets to you. That's why it's important to speak up. And that's why I said there's a section in the model policy that says that anybody can report. Anybody can report. Now, to be a proactive bystander, you also need to bear in mind that you do no harm. That's why when you said being a busybody and then you get injured, just when you're trying to be a proactive bystander, you need to look at your environment thoroughly and be quite observant of what's going on around you. If you as a student, you're passing somewhere, you see sexual harassment happening, and you look at the perpetrators and you know that it's something that you might not necessarily be able to, you know, confront like upfront in that in the manner that you might want to. You can easily take a video of what's going on, help the survivor or the person who is being, you know, harassed to gather evidence. And that's where also the first day cycle social support comes in. You can be able to practice times and bystander by, you know, offering um, first day cycle social support. You saw what happened. Even if you can't speak at the time, you go to the person and say, oh, I saw what happened, you're not a youth, I understand how you feel. Do you think we should proceed this way? Do you think we should proceed that way? That's how you can be a practice bystander. Some of the staff and students at the event shared their opinion and gains from the program. It has actually helped in making students be aware, creating sensitization in students' mindset, making them know what sexual harassment is all about, the do's and the don'ts, and how to go about it. Now, talking about behavioral change, the most important part of behavioral change is the change of mindset. Now, someone who has a poor mindset about giving subject matter or a topic does not know how to go about it. In as much as programs like this, sensitization programs, programs where people will be educated on what things like this really are, sexual harassment as an example, can actually help in changing that mindset and making our environment free for all to and safe for all to live. One thing I'm taking home from this program is to like, I'm going to tell everyone and every around me that sexual harassment, like the topic alone, is something that should be told everywhere, not only in um, programs that we put in schools and in many places that sexual harassment, that everybody should know about it, should educate people, because most people can't even talk because, for example, now your uncle is molesting you and stuff, but you can't say it because of things that is going to happen to them. So, teaching us and educating people, mostly girls, so that they can speak up and talk around to that. I'm really, I'm very, very happy to be here today. I'm really excited because um, it creates more awareness for we students because I gained a lot from this program here today. Because in the stand of um, the student and the lecturer, the student having interest in lecture, I really gained a lot from this program. Uh, this is a welcoming program. Uh, it is not today that uh, we are attending. And uh, it is always changing the life pattern of our students and staff that are opportune to attend this type of program. It is reducing the act of uh, uh, social harassment when we go back to school. Because the number of population of the people that come here from our college, they go on and sensitize others. And we also do such programs in the college. It is helping us much to put away sexual harassment in the college. Okay, the harassment team was created sometime in April last year. Um, Warif came and took some of our staff and students and trained us in this response team. And since that training, we have tried to organize functions to intimate our staff and students of the importance of not, you know, carrying out actions that will go against the team. And then we have also, on several occasions, given the students to know that they have to come and make their reports to the team, we have created a hotline, we have sent out the hotline, we have a social media handle that we can create, where we can get information from students. So we are trying to create awareness on the students' level and the staff level. 
and I've learned a lot. I've learned to always speak out. You should not be afraid to speak out when you are a victim of sexual harassment. You should not also allow people who are also still wear out clothes because of how we dress or how we talk. The sexual harassment, people who are us are also people that have like psychological psychological um, thinking. So it's it's not always about our dress and and we should always be able to speak up when we are dressed. What's the matter? Since we got here, you have barely completed a page now. Uh -uh. If I'm being honest, this has been the trend for a while now. Talk to me, you know I'll listen. There's really no issue. You don't have to bother yourself. It's just normal guy troubles. Hey, Bube, since when do you not share your guy troubles with me? Fatty, it's just really embarrassing to talk about. At this point in our lives, what can there be to be embarrassed about? Tell me now. Tell me. Be serious. Tell me now. Alright, I'll tell you. But you have to promise me not to say anything, even to your siblings. Fati, promise me. I promise. Now talk. Miss Aderonke, the GST lecturer, has been sending me inappropriate text messages and pictures. I thought it was an error, but she asked me yesterday why I'm ignoring her. How could you have kept this for three weeks? Ebube, we need to do something and we need to do it fast. That's the problem, Fati. She threatened to fail me if I refused to see her or tell anyone. Go to her and beg her. Tell her that you cannot do what she's asking because obviously you can't. You think I haven't done that? Guy, calm down now. You will record your conversation on the phone and we'll take it to the ICPC office in town. They will know what to do. Oh my goodness, Fati. You really are a genius. This message is brought to you by the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission. Fellow Nigerians, do you know that constituency projects are actually your projects? Do you know that constituency projects are funded by the federal government? Do you know that you can track release of constituency project funds for projects located in your constituency and follow up to know how they have been executed? Constituency projects happen because government does not want to leave any community out in development efforts. You have a responsibility to know what constituency project has been planned for your community, how much has been allocated for it, and whether value for money has been delivered. Take ownership of constituency projects located in your community. Protect them because they belong to you. Government knows about your needs and is planning for you. Government needs your help to ensure quality delivery. Know that constituency projects are actually your projects. Protect your constituency project. My constituency, my project. For information on funds allocated to projects in your constituency, call 0800-2255-4272. This message is from the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission and the National Orientation Agency. When victims can freely speak up about their experiences without fear of stigmatization, and schools join ICPC's effort by providing safe reporting channels for victims, then the ugly trend of sexual harassment will be greatly stemmed. That's our package on today's edition. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms showing on the screen. See you again next week for another engaging episode of Corruption Must Go. I am Hawasani Garuba. Same bye for now.